to the contrary, no. The ayes have it. Call on Government Order of the Day number four. Education Amendment Bill number two, interrupted debate on first reading. Members, when we were uh, reading this de debate, uh, the, uh, the Education Amendment Bill number two, the Honourable Nikki Kaye had seven minutes and 15 seconds remaining to speak, should she so wish to do so. I call Jan to meet Madam Speaker, I'm delighted to take a call on the Education Amendment Bill number two. This is a new experience for me, Madam Speaker, as a relatively new member into the House to see a bill that is cognated in this way, and I had to do some research around that to find out what that was. But I'm delighted with uh, the way that this bill has come together in very simple terms. For those people that are watching this back home, these are uh, simple changes that are being made to the Education Act. It's an amendment to the Education Act. They don't always fit together but they kind of hold hands through the process. And all of these amendments are ones that uh, I wholeheartedly endorse, but there's one in particular that I would like to talk about. I'll talk about all of them, though, but one in particular that I'm absolutely passionate about, Madam Speaker. Before I get to that one, though, I'll talk about some of the, the other amendments that are in this particular bill. For example, the, the first one is the ensuring that the key Education Council decisions are made in the context of government policy. Now, I think that that is a, a really important discussion that the Select Committee will have, and it would be great to hear the, the feedback from the sector and the sectors, different sectors that that impacts upon in that <coughs> particular way. Uh, we haven't had that in the past, Madam Speaker, but I think it is a debate that is worth having, that we talk about the, the work of our, our key education bodies be in line with government policy of the day. And as I say, I think that those education uh, particular peak body groups uh, need to have that discussion, and I look forward to this coming to select committee. One area that I think in this bill is a very good one is requiring private schools to, um, to have the same health and safety place, uh, legislation in place that is required for state and state integrated schools. Having been a principal in a state school and having worked in a state integrated school as a teacher, the fact that we had lots of requirements around us around making sure that our schools were physically and emotionally safe places for both students and staff was really, really important to the work that we did. And in my head, it is quite amazing that we actually have part of our sector that aren't falling under the same jurisdiction, don't have those same um, expectations around them, Madam Speaker, that the state and state integrated schools do. So I think that that is really important. I, I wonder whether when parents choose to send their, school, their children to those private schools that they actually understand that the same uh, law is not in place for those particular students. I'm sure that, uh, that that is something that we will hear from parents a lot about, and I look forward to hearing from those parents. I'm sure we'll also hear, Madam Speaker, from those particular schools, but I'm excited that we are now bringing those schools into line with each other. I think that that is a, a really good move in this particular space. Going on, excuse me, to the third um, third part of this particular bill, Madam Speaker, is the repealing of the very recent legislation, and it was very, very recent, of the communities of online learning. Um, this is a really important time to be having this debate, and I think that uh, you know, with everything, Madam Speaker, that we are uh, debating and, and looking at and having the conversation about in the education space, the communities of online learning or the calls is an absolutely important part of that. Now, it's only been in place since the Education Update Amendment Act of 2017, so. It's not, it hasn't been in place for very long. It's not going to be a huge disruption to actually repeal this at the moment. And it's not taking away from our really big providers, our uh, Te Aho, Te Kura, Paunamu, or the Correspondence School. They, 
business as usual for them, and our virtual learning networks, business as usual from them. They do an absolutely fantastic job in that particular space, and we want to see them continue. So we don't want to see the disruption to those providers. What we do want to see is that that legislation is actually fit for purpose for the changes that we are bringing in in this particular space, Madam Speaker. That, well, not even so much the changes that we're bringing in, the changes that our, our public, our sector, our young people, our teachers, all sectors are having the conversation at the moment and actually looking at where we're heading. One of the issues that we've had in recent times and I talk, go, go right back to the change from tomorrow's school. So when I say recent, I'm then talking about the last 30 years, Madam Speaker. One of the issues that we've had is that changes to education have been very piecemeal. So we've had one bit happening here, one bit happening here, something else happening over here. And, and we haven't had this coordinated approach to education. And the calls, I believe, Madam Speaker, have been part of that particular piecemeal approach. It is timely for us to be having this discussion. And it's a timely discussion across both political sides of this House. It is really important that we hear from people. It is really important that we hear from, from our particular sectors. But the one area, Madam Speaker, that I'm absolutely passionate about, that I'd like to, to spend the last part of my discussion here this afternoon talking about, is the cohort entry of five-year-olds. Now, I'm absolutely passionate about this because I do believe that cohort entry of five-year-olds has its place. But what I don't believe, Madam Speaker, is that cohort entry of under fives into schooling has any place in our education system whatsoever. And I am delighted that we are talking about, in this bill, having cohort entry of children on their fifth and after fifth birthday. Now, I have heard the argument made that we're taking away that right of children to start school at five. Absolutely no, we are not. I take those people that make that argument back to recommendation 13 of the advisory group of early learning, who was in place to the then Minister of Education, uh, the Honourable Hekia Prata, in 2015. Absolutely fabulous report that that advisory group put out. Absolutely amazingly talented, incredibly gifted academic practitioners and academic people on there from the early childhood sectors. People like Dr Joss Nuttall, people like Dr Jeanette Clark and Phillips, the most amazing academics that we have in this country and we can be very proud of the work that they did. Recommendation 13 in that particular report, Madam Speaker, talked about perhaps having cohort or individual enrolments or a mixture of both. But one thing that that advisory group was very, very, very clear about and were very clear about to the minister at the time was that that had to start from five, that there was no place in this country to undervalue early childhood education and have our children starting in its schools younger than five. Now, when this legislation, was our Education Act, was changed, Madam Speaker, to allow children to start up to eight weeks before their fifth birthday when cohort entry was introduced, this particular advisory group uh, actually contacted the minister with their extreme disappointment. They had been the minister's advisory group and they were incredibly disappointed in the, the decision that had been made because out of any of their recommendations, this was something that they were very, very clear about. You could not start and there was no place in this country for that. Now, the reason I'm so passionate and the reason that I know this um, advisory group work so well, Madam Speaker, is that I was actually the schooling representative on that advisory group. So this is work that I know inside out. I know 
I absolutely know the passion of our top early childhood academics for this particular work, and that is why I am incredibly proud that we are actually putting in place the true recommendation that that particular group made to the minister and to the government at that particular time. What I do look forward to, Madam Speaker, is I do look forward to us as a government, and I know that that is happening, is working through the other recommendations that we haven't quite got to yet in that particular report. That's not in this particular bill, but the, the fact that we are truly putting in place the recommendation that those particular one, and they were all women, wonderful women, and I don't count myself in that, actually, I count, I'm talking about the early childhood academics who were, just blew me away with their knowledge and their expertise. The fact that we are doing this today and doing this now and taking this to select committee, I'm very proud and I therefore commend this bill to the House. Yeah. I call Dr Palmjeet Palmer. Thank you, Madam Speaker, for this opportunity to speak on the education amendment.